I think if you have aspirations to go back to school, then you should. My thing is, you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't go back to school to get yourself another job. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Nurse Boss Shift. It's your girl, Dr. Kiana Jones. And I'm Crystal P, the Beauty NP. And today, as always, is a great topic that we have experienced these questions being asked of us in the nursing community, and we thought it would be good to talk about it on our podcast. And it kind of relates to entrepreneurship, but we'll talk about how shortly. But this topic is about going back to school. Yes. <laughs> Should you go back to school if you've ever thought about going back and you were like, what program should I go to or should I even do it? Is this something that I want to do? Uh, we want to talk about that today and give you some of our our individual insights on that from our perspective and also talk about what we would have done differently. <laughs> I think that's a good one, too. So we'll start with Crystal. Yes. Should they go back to school or not? It depends. All right. Okay. It depends. What <laughs> it does it all depend depends. On? So in thinking about the ADN, BSN, MSN in nursing, I think some hospitals, as we talked about a little bit earlier, may pay a little bit of a difference. Um, so I think if you have aspirations to go back to school, then you should. My thing is you shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't go back to school to get yourself another job. Um, I think you should go back to school thinking ahead about where you want your future to be mm -hmm. and see if that degree that you're trying to obtain uh, will help you get there. But it shouldn't be for another job specifically. Um, and then also with like leveraging your degree, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I'm so, so business minded now, I wouldn't go back to school to get a degree just to get another job. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. I think we can all agree that we want to increase our earning potential, but I think we've been lied to <laughs> yes. because a degree does not necessarily no. increase your earning potential. That's one thing. Um, and honestly, I read that, you know, these larger companies like Google and some of the other ones, they don't even care if you have a degree or not. No. It's more about what you can, your skill, yeah. like what you can create. Now with nursing, we have to go to school because yeah. it is very specialized um, and we are a skill-based profession. Right. But once you become a nurse, you become a nurse. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I think we're one of the few professions where you can int your entry point could even be at the associate's degree mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. where you could be working alongside of someone who has a bachelor's, a master's, even a PhD. Yeah. And you guys taking care of patients, doing the same thing. So I like what you said about like you have to think about your endpoint. Um, and I think the way our educational, especially advanced education system is structured, sometimes it's not even worth it. Right. Because if you go back to school and then you invest, like depending on what program you go to, you're going to spend a lot of money investing in your education and then come out to only make what a couple of dollars mm -hmm. more an hour. Like, is it worth it going in tens of thousands of dollars in debt to do that? Yeah, definitely not. Um, <laughs> I will say they're like at the hospital that I am at, there's a big push for education. So they're paying for our degrees. So mm -hmm. if you can get your degree paid for, mm -hmm. then why not? Mm -hmm. um, so I absolutely think that that is definitely plausible. Um, but I think it brings up a different question of this whole divide of the degrees. Mm. So like the ADN nurses against the mm. BSN and MSN and where does that all come from? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's why... You know, nurses, I, I don't have my BSN. I have a bachelor's in something else, but it's almost like looked down upon. But we're all nurses. Like you said, mm -hmm. a nurse is a nurse is a nurse. So this great divide that has been bought upon nurse in the nursing community about what degree someone has, I think is the main driving factor yeah. of why force of why people feel that they have to go um, into debt to get mm -hmm. another degree. Yeah. In my world now, that's 
I don't, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I we know <laughs> in the political system of the healthcare system, mm -hmm. it's like, let me see what's right. on your badge. Oh, and then now we have these big old ADN nurses uh -huh. and BSN nurses uh -huh. and advanced degree nurses and I, tags and I that don't go on think it. that's by accident. I yeah. really don't because, okay, there was about in 2000 and I want to say 10, there was a huge push for like, there was this Institute of Medicine report that said that a baccalaureate degree mm -hmm. nurses who take care of patients have better patient right. outcomes. Yeah. And because of that, the healthcare, organ the healthcare system started to say, and if you wanted to be magnet status, magnet. you had to have a certain percentage yes. of nurses. So then they started to say, okay, we'll take ADN nurses, but they have to have their baccalaureate by 18 months, mm -hmm. by however much, 24 months, depending on the healthcare system. And so I think that further led to stratification in our nursing profession. Yeah. So it's like, are you an ADN? Are you a BSN? Now, I like just the RN. Like if you, doesn't matter your degree, when it comes to taking care of patients, that is to just identify you yeah. as like, are you the nurse? Are you the doctor? Are you the what? Right. But when they start putting like your degree on it, I feel like that creates a, a place of like hierarchy mm -hmm. in our healthcare system. And when it comes to like, should you go back to get the degree, going back to what you said, why are you doing it? Yeah. If it's not going to add more to your bottom line and you're doing it now, get your bachelor. You can go to an online program yeah. like Western mm -hmm. Governors or somewhere like that. Not to pitch them because they didn't sponsor this right. at all. <laughs> but I'm just mentioning them because they seem to be re really reasonably priced. But if you go somewhere like that and then you work for a company that's paying for it, I mean, why not? Yeah. But when it comes to like these advanced degrees, I feel like these educational institutions are really playing on that yeah. because you have the and I'm not talking about advanced like a a p r n like if you like c r n a or a family nurse practitioner or a psych I'm talking about you know the advanced in degree in education mm -hmm. or advanced in like all these things that are like more literal art liberal yeah. arts and like not really you don't have a a skill that you come, I guess you could, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't come for me, <laughs> but when it comes to like academia, you can, I, I worked in academia for 11 years. I didn't have a master's of education. Right. Like what they teach you how to develop curriculums and things like that. I, I just don't think it's necessary. Now, with that being said, I feel like there's a place for everything and I don't want to like down cause I have a PhD. So like I have went all the way, but I have a lot of per perspective now going that route too right and if i was to look back and think like how i could what i would have done differently i learned a lot in my phd mm -hmm. program but like when i look back it's like look at what i'm doing like i'm not doing that now if i was going to open up a school or like i guess work as a Research. professor on, on a tenure track at a university and wanted to do research yes that would be good but I just don't think that's why a lot of people are doing it. They're mm -hmm. doing it because they think that it's going to up their status. When, from my perspective, upping your status is making more impact and revenue. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I think that that's really going to, should be what you look at first when you're trying to make a decision on if you're going to go back for your degree or not. Right. And, and like in entrepreneurship, we get asked this a lot with IV hydration, like, should I go back and get my nurse practitioner? And yes, if you can leverage that in your business, because then if, especially if you're in a full practice mm -hmm. state, you don't have to yeah. pay a, a medical director. So those reasons are all valid. You know, there's people who have dreamed of having that doctor behind their name. So all, you know, go out and, and of course, if that's your dream and desire, but if you're just getting it, like you said, just for the status or because you think you're going to get paid way more then yeah. uh, evidence shows that you're not. Yeah. Uh, because we all have the same skill of being the RN and these, like you said, more liberal degrees of education and leadership. They and I know a lot of people who get them and don't do anything like, yeah, well, I just want it. You know, I just wanted it for maybe it'll uh, I'll get a raise, but you won't get a raise. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point of putting yourself, as you always say, putting yourself more in debt for a job and that's yeah. what I want people to consider is not putting yourself more in debt just to go out and get another job in nursing because it really doesn't matter yeah one of the things um this was like 
oh my gosh, he wasn't even my mentor. I was actually still working as a nursing supervisor at a hospital. And he was like, he was a case manager, but he was a consultant for the hospital. And so he had his own business and that's how they found him. And he did, he helped them build out their case management department. Mm. And so one thing he told me, and I was just so, and I was always intrigued by those who were like different mm. and not doing what they told us to do, yeah. right? So he was a nurse and he was an older gentleman and he had his own consulting company and that's how they found him. And they were paying him a ton of money. And I was just like, what they because because i was in leadership so i saw the voice. his money <laughs> like i was just like okay wait what and so he told me he said the biggest problem that people have is they the question that we're asked as children is what do you want to be but it should be what do you want in life mm -hmm. and then that should be kind of the guiding light to get to where you want to go so when yeah. you're thinking about starting um, I mean when you're thinking about going back to school or maybe if you should invest in that what do you want what do you want in life is that going to get you there or not you already are miserable with your job mm -hmm. so like if you're gonna pay ten thousand twenty thousand dollars or invest and $20,000 in your education just to get you another job, don't you understand you're still going to be miserable? Absolutely. You're still going to be unhappy because it's not that you're working at the bedside. Those same unhappy nurses, nine times out of 10, become unhappy nurse practitioners because they are working in primary care, right. which now they realize technically is even less money, not just because when you start, you earn less, but also it's less money because you're taking work home with you. Mm -hmm. Like you do your charting at home and now you go from like, I can say peace, I'm gone. Mm -hmm. And now I, I've handed off to the nurse to now you have to keep with those patients. Like, mm. I think they don't realize that. I was going to say, as in my new role as a nurse practitioner, at I'm like, the first couple of days, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I see. I would absolutely hate this. Because yeah. as a nurse, you at least have a or RN, you have a break, right? When you're working, there mm -hmm. is like back-to-back -back patients. And then, um, not to mention, if I call off now, that's 15, 16 patients they have to call and cancel. So it's not just like, oh, Ooh. we'll just find another nurse to cover you. Yeah. Now it's more, it's more responsibility. So, yeah. yeah, I think that those are things that we don't think about when yeah. we're not doing it. Um, definitely in my, in my, when I was in preceptorship for nurse practitioner, I had my first preceptor was an uh, NP who owned her own business. And she was instilling in me that there's no way she would work for a hospital because she knows what she's worth and she knows how much they're getting paid. She's like, those few dollars they throw at us, there's no way that I, I would um, work in someone else's business for that. So I think being yeah. able to see what actually it is that you think you're getting into, because mm -hmm. like you said, if you're miserable in one place then you're definitely going to be miserable somewhere else um, because you're just not happy with Why with what are you're you doing. miserable? I think that's the thing. Like, why are you, you, you the money will pacify you for a, a very short amount mm -hmm. of time. Like it will pacify you. Okay. I get it. But at some point, it's going to be like this. You're going to start to realize what you're exchanging for that hourly rage, yes. whatever that is, even the COVID money. Um, you start to realize that. And I think then you get back to that same place of being unhappy. So I would say have a clear goal or plan on wh of what you're going to do once you have that degree, whatever it is. Really take some time and look in the marketplace and like see what they're earning out there and then find a way to use that and see if you can to if you do go through the pro program and complete it like how can you tie that into something that you really want to do like your passion mm -hmm. yeah. because i think most of us are not listen the days are gone from our parents where the the generation x's and baby boomers where they're you're actually able to retire and live yeah. off the retirement. retirement that is done yeah. so like and i and i see it all the time it's like how they expect like my stepdad like he worked they live in illinois so he worked for um a factory like mm -hmm. you know back in the day mm -hmm. they had all those so he worked there from 19 to 61 or something mm -hmm. like that right and he retired and it's like i'm i'm saying how is he supposed to live right. off it's not livable mm -hmm. 
So, you, and then you add the fact but that we're you, still going on about our lives as if it is, it's it will be livable, right? <laughs> it won't ever it be. Will, and us, mm -hmm. especially like you give it, first of all, we don't know what retirement age is going to be, but they're definitely going to push it back by the time we get that. Yeah. It's not going to be 65. Mm -hmm. So you thinking about that and it's like, okay, well, what do I need to do now? Because you, if you go and you go back to school, you're going into debt. You're going more into debt. And so how long is that going to take you to pay off? First of all, now, if you have a, a organization that'll pay for it for you, then I say have at it. But if you don't, you need to think about that. And the next thing is you need to think about your long term. I think so many people are, don't spend enough time thinking about down the line, like 10 years down the line, because everybody is in this right now. So I'm unhappy right now, which is exactly what I did with my PhD. Mm -hmm. I was like Same. <laughs> unhappy right now. And my daughter was leaving and I need to change in my life. And I always said I wanted to do my PhD. So I'm just going to do whatever the highest thing. Like that was always what I was, yeah. what I did. Like even when I worked, I was like, what's the top job? Mm -hmm. What's the top nursing job? I never thought outside of that. Yeah. And the be, to be honest, you guys, you do, if you're looking into entrepreneurship, I hum got humbled as I don't know what attending these conferences mm -hmm. with all these people who have no, no degrees. degrees. <laughs> If they have a high school diploma and they were able to spend, let's say I went to school for 12 years, the total with my baccalaureate, my master's and my PhD. So let's say they were able to have those 12 years with on the job learning. Yeah. And I was going through the theory and theoretical mm, right. this and all that, that, that 12 years is why they are seven, eight, nine figures. <laughs> and some getting this in a day, like the, it's seven figures in a day. And I am trying because now I have to really break down all of those mindset shifts that I went through in that where it put me in a box. And now I have to unlearn that and I have to really work through that. And I don't yeah. think people realize that. I was going to say that it. And it also inspires me how audacious they are. And they just go and do it. Like, well, I have an idea. I think this will work. And they do it. But us or people who are yeah. um, highly educated, like you said, we have to, it's so hard, it's so much harder for us to break out mm -hmm. of um, doing something that's different because we're so used to checking off the boxes and doing what we're told. And you know, this is, you go to school and you get a job and you retire. Yeah. So for us, it takes a longer time to get out of that mindset and to actually do those things because we have been, what, institutionalized? Yeah, it's true. Um, while people with no degrees are like, I'm just gonna, Go out on a whim and I'm going to try, try it. it. And if it doesn't work, I've learned and I'm going to yeah. keep going. Mm -hmm. Like that is the difficult part. And so I think you should ask yourself, are you trying to forego the NF, like the difficult part? Or are you doing it because you know it's what some is going to lead to something that you want to do when you go back to school, if you decide to go back to school? Yeah. The next thing I think for people who are considering going back, um, be I think you should get a, a higher skill set and not just, I'm sorry, liberal arts is just not where it's at. Like for real, even for baccalaureate, like you go for no shade to y'all. What was your bachelor's in? Psychology. Mine's, okay. That's the same. Perfect example. <laughs> but mine's is public health. Same thing. Like, it's like, I thought I was going to graduate and like have all this money when I got, and then I was looking up jobs and I was like, whoa, I, I was making that at Sprint PCS. Yeah. And like, what am I doing? <laughs> I got to stay in school right. and like continue to be broke until I, but it was because you know having the skill of being a nurse I think is definitely a good position to be in but if you're going to go back definitely do something that's going to give you a higher skill set than mm -hmm. just like education or administration because the truth is you can get a job in education or administration mm -hmm. without having that specialty absolutely so it's like then the supply and demand it's like well why should they necessarily even if they hire you you could have done it done it before and didn't even have to go into debt so yeah. I, I think that you need to consider um, in particular, but I also think that sometimes we are um, chasing what other people think of us. Mm. And I think that has to be a conversation that you have to have with yourself yeah. um, because of what you said, like, oh, BSN, MSN, ADN, whatever. I think 
it kind of is a reflection of what you think of you yeah. that other people can make you feel bad about what you're mm-hmm. doing and where you are and this even for people who are lpns and mm-hmm. rns there's a lot of that it. lpn yeah. rn i don't subscribe to it but yeah. i know that there's a lot of like oh you're lpn you don't this you don't that i despise that mm-hmm. because and essentially it it comes from a place of the people, the RNs who try to talk about LPNs are insecure. Yeah. And then the LPNs, by allowing them to to kind of penetrate your mind and make you feel less than or even have to argue your perspective speaks about your also lack of self-esteem. I think it goes both ways yeah. for somebody to attack somebody and for you to receive it and really try to feel like you have to argue. You don't have to argue your perspective. But if you're going back to school because of those people, I think that's a problem. Yeah, because then you'll find yourself going back to school and still be miserable. <laughs> still be <laughs> miserable. Didn't it, all goes back. it all goes right. back to that. <laughs> all goes back to that. Um, because, yeah, those people are, oh, congratulations. That's all they're going to say. They yeah. don't care. and They're going to go on about their lives. But you let that penetrate you so much that you went and got in debt and went through all the stress for no reason. So, yeah, you really have to dig deep and look within to ask yourself the question of why you're doing what you're doing or um, why is it that you want to get this degree? Um, because if you're doing it for anything other than something for yourself, then yeah. you're going to be miserable every time. What if you took that money and invested it in a business? I was going to say that or coach to get to get <laughs> or those, a coach to get, to those get those the skills, skills for yeah. a business. Like what if you took that? Because I know they make it so easy, right? You mm-hmm. go, you get your student, your what is it called? Grad plus loan, whatever yeah. loans. They'll give that to you. They won't give you a loan for your business, which I think says a lot right. about our system. But they won't give you a loan for your business, but they will mm-hmm. give you hundreds of thousands of dollars to go into debt for the educational system. What if you took your money and invested in, like you said, a coach or invested in a business? I would say the coach first Mm -hmm. for the business that you want. So they're an expert in that space. What if you did that? Because we also know young kids at this conference, 25 years old, Mm -hmm. who literally said, I went to college one semester that wasn't where it was. He mm-hmm. took his money and he invested yeah. big, you know, big 20, 30, 50,000 50, maybe yeah. in a coach. And he's, he said that was his college. And guess what? He's making more than all of them. Yeah. He's already <laughs> hit his million for, uh, for a year. Yeah. He's, he's made his million. So talk about a return off on social, investment. Off the of social media, uh-huh. off of being mm-hmm. at home. Yeah. I'm telling so. you guys, I have been so humbled sitting in these rooms and mm-hmm. like meeting with people. And I'm just, you know, I, of course, I had the same mindset when I first started where I was like, oh, you know, I have all these degrees and I'm like proud of it. And then I'm looking at people and I'm just like, well, I don't know if this ain't what I thought. <laughs> right. Like they're like, oh, yeah, you you went to school. Great, great, great. But but you didn't. Right. And you're making way more <laughs> right. than me. Like, let's talk about that. Right. And I'm paying the people who make mm-hmm. way more than me to teach me how to do what they're doing yeah. because they spent their time otherwise. So I would just say really focus on what your overall goal is. Um, don't think school is going to relieve you of the stress and anguish that you may be experiencing at your job. Some of it, you, you hit on it, uh, Chris, some of it could be con- attributed to you as a person. Like if you're not showing up on time, if you're not doing, then it could be you. But a lot of it is probably attributed to the organization. So is it that you need to change organizations? Mm-hmm. You need to change professions? Do you need to step out and just really try to do your own thing? I think those are questions that you need to ask. And more importantly, if nothing else, don't be impulsive on making the decision to go back to school. And I, I just don't think that burnout is a reason to go back to no. school. No, at all. you're just, again, going to buy yourself another job. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to feel buy miserable. And burnt out another job. And, and, and now you'll be in debt. Exactly. <laughs> I wanted to ask you if you could redo it, how would you? Yeah, go good about question. Time? I definitely would not have uh, tamed my PhD. Uh, you guys may not know, but I've talked about it on the other podcast. I, it was four years which was a very long time, very long. And I drove to San Diego every single Thursday. I live in LA, in the LA area. So every single Thursday I drove down. That was a lot. (laughs) And, and minus the, just the driving and the logistics of it, I do not really use it. Like I I use it on social media (laughs) to research. (laughs) I can learn how to research. I can attend conferences and I know Uh, you know, what they're saying because I've studied it, but I'm not using that here. And I think about those four years, what that could have done for my business, right? Because I was uh, in school 
and launched my business the same because it was I started my business. Well, I started on my journey in 2017 and I started um, in 2015. Uh, school for my PhD. So I, I was doing it at the same time. Imagine if I had not done that because, you know, dissertation is a killer, right? So, and I had put all that time and energy in my business. My business will be a lot further. Um, and, I, and that's why I say you have to think about what your end goal is on why you're doing it. Because if I could have done it different, I just would have went and got my nurse practitioner mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I would have started my business. I would not have went back for PhD. Yes, I say Dr. Jones, but I'm not paying uh, $100,000 for the word Dr. Jones. Okay, <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and that would have gave me a lot of the skill set. And like I'm still I feel like I'm still catching up. Because like learning marketing, learning sales, learning this, like, and it's been a while and I still have a while to go. Yeah. So I think for me, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have went back for my PhD. Although I did learn a lot. I connected with some amazing people and I also gained a lot of confidence being able to actually complete it. Yeah. Um, I share it as a story that helps, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not, I definitely would have, uh, not went back. I would have went straight for my MP. In fact, I would have did my MP when I graduated. So I went, went graduated from the Mechan program at UCLA, very first cohort, and it was a two-year program. I probably would have worked that year and went back and got my postmasters. That's yeah. what I should have did. Yeah, that would have been a whole different experience for me. Yeah. What would you have done? Um, <laughs> probably the same. Just got my MP sooner for my business. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess it kind of coincided at the same time because I finished my MP as I was um, just opening my business. Um, but definitely would have did it sooner and also like the coaching world if I would have known about that sooner, just starting to um, invest to more in, into coaching earlier. Yeah. Um, but I knew, yeah, fairly quick. And the reason why I even decided to do MP is for one, my job was paying. Mm -hmm. um, and then also my mom who was thinking about retiring at the time, you know, was looking for different jobs and some, and she did want to teach and some of them um, wanted her to have a BSN, I think, mm -hmm. so, uh, but she was able to find, she has a, also a bachelor's in psychology. So she was just saying, you know, just go to school so that when you are a retirement age, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, like, I think I'll do that. But knew very quickly when I got into clinical that like, no, nah, this, this isn't it. So I'm so glad that the two collided. But yeah, if I could do it over again, I would have done it sooner. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So just think about when you go to school, are you enhancing your skill set? Yes. Right? If you're not, and I mean it needs to be measurable, like going from an RN to an FMP, that's an advance in skill set. Now you have to think about as an FMP, like, do you want to do the work that they do? Do you want to, you know, you're taking a pay cut. You have to think about all of, you have to consider all of that, but that's a skill set. It's not that the same level as an RN, you're learning more, you have prescriptive authority, you can assess, diagnose, like you can do more. Same thing if you wanted to do psych MP or if you wanted to do CRNA, those make sense, but don't, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't say don't, they're going to get me, but think about if you really want to go like and invest in like education, a master's in education or a master's in administration. I really would think long and hard about that, especially if it's going to cost you. Now, if yeah. it's free, go do whatever you want to do. Yeah. If your institution pay for it, but just think it through. I say that's the, that's, I think the biggest mistake people make. Absolutely. Yeah. So hope that uh, helps. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you guys um, took something away from uh, from um, this conversation, because I think a lot of you out there are not happy and you're trying to find a happiness. But remember, if you are going back to school because that is comfortable for you, it's probably not the way to go. That's for sure. That's a good one. Anything that is comfortable, you should go the other way. You need to be in a space of discomfort. And so that means with school or whatever, it needs to be uncomfortable. And a lot of us veer towards school because that's what we know. Like we spent years, like we know the syllabus, we know how to go. We know all yeah. of that. That's why I did it. So yeah. don't veer into comfort, you guys. It's You're supposed to go the other way. Sorry, that's, but that's how I feel. That's yep. good. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our podcast. I hope that you guys found enjoyment and value in this. As always, if you have a nurse, 
or a nurse practitioner or anyone in the healthcare space who is aspiring or current entrepreneurs, make sure you share this podcast. Don't get gatekeep, you guys.